All right, all right, all right. That's kind of smart. I like that. I like that. So thank you, John Benner and TDI, uh, for and thank you, K-Bar, for having the guts and the courage to produce something different, uh, something unique, uh, and to come up with, well, you know, a, a valuable tool that people can use. So I applaud you for that. All right, let's move on. Play the uh, Marshall Pistol uh, music. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, what? All right. <laughs> There's no Marshall Pistol music. <laughs> Jared, since you're younger than me, I'm going to let you go first. What did you learn this weekend? Anything? Uh, most of it was a refresher. The teaching aspect is where I'm doing most of my learning now, the information I've had for a long time. So most of the learning points that I have are based around actually instructing students. Um, one of them being that if, if you're an aspiring instructor, demonstrating step-by-step, step, including the little things that you don't think are important during the process, demonstrating those little portions of the process might actually be the most important thing. Because as we, you know, you and I as an instructors, we've been doing this for a while. We've been doing the actions that we're teaching for a while. We, we've mastered these actions. Well, teaching it to a person is a different skill set. Right? Yes. So if you're taking the knowledge that you've mastered and you're delivering it to somebody else, it's a different skill set. And that's something we talk about in the instructor development class where there's different types of learners. So if A, you have to figure out which type of learner you're dealing with. Right. And then you have to figure out how to deliver the information or if in dad's case, he's done it so many times, he already has prepped um, points of instruction or periods of instruction that hit on different types of the, the different types of learning. And um, but anyway, so for me, like when you do an action that you've mastered, you don't think about you, you don't have to think about it because you've reached um, conscious I'm sorry, unconscious competence. Right. You've reached that. You don't have to think about doing it. When you're teaching it, you really have to think about what you do in that <laughs> process. So it's like the the little things where you don't think about when you're doing them are the most important things to help the student that you're teaching master that action as well. Because you want them, you want the student to be able to reach unconscious competence. And the only way to do that is for them to first understand every single piece of the every single piece of the process that they have to master in the first place. Mm -hmm. So the, that was a long winded way of me saying that the thing that I learned this weekend is that it, how important it is to really break down the small stuff. Yeah. It's, it's difficult. Uh, often if, if you're really good at doing something, whatever it is, uh, and, and you've taken a long time to learn how to do that something, then you just do it, you know, and, and, and the longer you do it, the more natural it becomes. And you should, you're like, oh, and if you're really good, you can't say, but you can't just say, well, do what I'm doing. Yeah. Watch me and do what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, th that doesn't help people. And something that I've learned is that when you master something, what you've done is you've taken the way that you were taught and you've made it work for you, the way that you do it. Well, not everybody else is going to do it the same way and achieve the same in goal as you are they're going to have to do it a slightly different way but in order for them to make it theirs they first have to understand the the basics of the fundamentals of the action and that's where and, and that's really the the quote unquote small stuff that i was talking about is is the fundamentals of each process that we're teaching because that is if you can master the fundamentals that's where you can really achieve mastery and um and start making the thing yours. Yeah. Yeah, we had uh, we had several, we had numerous people. We actually had more women come to the class than men, which what? for me is, is startling almost because uh, I've been doing this for 30 years. I'll, I'll tell you know how many women were in my very first class? Zero. Zero, none. My very first professional handgun class uh, that I took in 1986, there were zero uh, women who were there. Uh, and that was, you know, I was talking, you know, talking to James. Uh, we, we, uh, I think it was in one of our interviews that we did. 
And he said one, that was one of the big things that's changed was in the in the eighties and nineties, if one woman showed up to a uh, handgun class, you know, whatever concealed carry fighting pistol Surprising. class, you know, that was odd. It was you know, if two showed up, it was bizarre, and they probably came together. Uh, but certainly no more than two out of 12 or what have you. Now we've, we've moved into the, the uh, a, a period where women are actually, you know, coming with their husbands voluntarily, not because they had to. You know, we had some, we had, uh, we had women come on their own and we had women come with their husbands, but they were there because they wanted to be there. I've been in a position where the husband brought the wife and she's like, well, he, he said I should come to this thing, so I'm going to sit here and listen to you, but I really don't want to be here. I think the wives brought the husbands this time. Yeah, the, no kidding. I think this time the, the, it, it was more like the wives like, hey, we need to go to this class. Let's go. Uh, everybody was a fantastic student. Though. Oh, yeah, we had yeah. we stacked the deck yeah, uh, because it was, an in, it was, it was a, a private class because yeah. we, we did an invitation. It was an invitation class this weekend, or invitation classes uh, this week. We had people show up with with a uh, a variety of hardware, um, from Beretta to Taurus to Glock to Canic to Smith and Wesson. Um, so we had yeah a couple of Glocks yesterday. We had a Canic, a Taurus, um, Smith and Wesson. So. Uh, not everything was represented, the but I was. Were, no, wait. Berettas were the first day. Yeah, we had, we had Berettas. Berettas were on the first day, and the second um, day was the Tauruses. Taurus, Smith, Glock, yep. Canic. Yeah, um, a little. Uh, it's crazy. Everybody likes their own thing. It's a, Yeah, it's everybody a likes their own stuff. thing. And that's a, one of the important things. That, another thing that we talk about in the instructor development course is you must first master the topic you have to master what you're going to be teaching mm. well that's kind of difficult nowadays in the in the gun world because there are so many different things however the good news is there are fundamentals that you can learn of about each quote-unquote platform mm. and and it carries on through so you have like striker fired guns most of those are pretty dang similar then you have the uh like revolvers for instance most of those are we didn't have any revolvers well, we didn't but those, <laughs> those pistols are out there right so if it's they exist with the revolver you have to be able to help that student run that gun you have to teach them how to do it i'm kind of looking forward to somebody showing up in a, in a modern class with a revolver you would be that guy yeah. he took fighting pistol with a freaking mosin a gaunt with a a 20 foot bayonet on the front of it <laughs> that's only 18 inches yeah uh, I, I was talking to him to dad i was talking to dad about this the other day i was like you know like you see a bayonet on an ar and ak and and you're like yeah that's there's a bayonet there but yeah whatever you see one on a mosin you're like that dude will stab me from the other state yeah that, that dude's gonna stab me from the other state line and, yeah he'll stab me i could stab you over the fence yeah. yeah you could be on the other side of the fence i stab you over to the, through the fence yeah oh uh, other after actions. One of the things that uh, that uh, that I found maybe not strange, but guys will still do. Guys still do this. Guys will go and they'll buy themselves a gun because they're gun guys and they know guns and they buy themselves a gun. And then their wife needs to get a gun. They're like, eh. they won't. They don't buy the same kind of gun or brand or whatever. Like. If if you want to buy a Sig, what's it's you know I don't know X twenty five Elite Crimson, you know laser nuclear carry whatever, um, that's cool. But why do guys go out and buy themselves a Sig X twenty five, and then they buy their wife a Keltec P three eighty because that one came in a different color. <laughs> they buy their wife an uh, a purple Ruger LCP. Uh, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, well, I mean, I guess I kind of do, but it doesn't make any, it doesn't make any practical sense because you said, well, would you carry, and I'm, I'm asking you guys out there, you men, adult husband guys, would you carry a, a Ruger LCP as your primary self-defense gun? Now, some of you are, but a lot of you guys are like, no, 
No, I carry a fill in the blank, right? Whatever. Because that is a fighting gun. I'm like, okay. Because you want to use that gun to stop bad people. Yep, that's what I want to do. Now, you're a large physically fit, hopefully. Uh, some of you might not be physically fit. You need to work on that crap. But uh, you're a large physically fit man. So you're going to carry a real fighting gun to stop people. Wouldn't you say that your wife probably is less physically capable than you of fighting off bad people? Your wife should actually have without a, a tool. Yeah, without a tool. without a tool. Your wife needs to have as good, if not a better fighting platform than you do because she's at a disadvantage. When when people attack you, what what is you know, Jerry, we've been talking about this for literally since we started this program, since we started down this path and even before. So the person who attacks you is probably going to be what? Bigger. Younger, stronger, larger uh, uh, than you, right? You're going to have all the advantages. Longer, younger than you, stronger than you, bigger than you, uh, faster than you poten potentially, or there will be multiple. So people, and I said, people who are, smaller weaker and older than you don't generally attack you the uh my goal in life is i can't stop myself from getting older but i can stop myself from getting weaker mm. i can continue to get strong that's true and you say that that's, that's because you've never worked at walmart <laughs> now you jerry but dad and that's uh what'd you say that's because I've never worked at Walmart. like getting attacked you. by somebody smaller and weaker or older than well, you. well okay yeah. <laughs> but if someone was smaller, weaker, and older than me, and they attacked me, unless they had a machete or something, I could probably use my hands to defend myself. You know, if you have a five foot three wife who's forty seven years old, chances are she's not going to be attacked by a grandmother. She's going to be attacked by someone who is a male who's larger and stronger than her. So she needs more than you do. You see, your wife needs a better fighting tool than you do what Whoa, that's crazy talk so the idea that men would spend six hundred dollars on a super bad I, can i say badass on public i think i can we've said it before we yeah talk about yeah, Jericho, no, bad badass all the time badass is acceptable so, so you're you know you're gonna go out and spend 699 on a super badass fighting pistol and then you go spend $289 on a pistol for your wife because, well, I just want her to have something. I love those. Well, I want her to have something. Well, buy her a big dog. Uh, speaking of big dogs, we, we got to spend some time this weekend with a big dog. <laughs> the big dog! Woo -woo! <laughs> Zach, you've met Bear, right? Yeah, I know Bear. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> when we're out at the ranch, he hangs around us, and he's he's so big and dumb. It's just it's just it makes me laugh. <laughs> like, I want to drive my car from here to there, and he's like, mm, "Nope, I'm gonna lay right here." Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> so we're trying to we're trying to park the car the trailer right. We're trying to move the trailer, so he walks in in the road. The, the driveway and he sits down and i'm like come on come on come <laughs> on yawn. he yawns literally yawns and lays down in the drive and he's like 200 pounds uh, like, bro come on <laughs> but i digress i digress now the good news is that uh, if you come to a class with a borrowed gun if you borrow a gun from someone, you say, I'm going to go to this, this handgun class, a shooting class, and I need a gun. And the guy's like, I, you know, the, it's generally a dude. And like, oh, I got one for you. Um, and, and they give you a Beretta 92. If you're a woman and someone gives you a Beretta 92 to go to a pistol class, the good news is if you come to Paul Markle's pistol class, I know how to teach you how to use that thing. Even though you're you're um, mechanically, you've been mechanically handicapped by something that has that is way too. Not only do Berettas are 
92s are such a bad idea. Not only do you have to. Yeah, I was going to say the the they're so the bad. point of what we're saying here is that we can make we can help you make any gun work, any gun that you bring with you, as long as as long as it actually shoots and functions. Oh yeah, as long as it actually but, goes bang and cycles. I mean, I can teach you to shoot yeah, whatever you brought. But there's there is no reason to handicap yourself if you don't need to. Why yeah. would you make yourself perform extra actions? to make your gun go bang when you don't need to do that you're not ordered to carry that specific gun you can bring whatever you want yeah yeah oh something else that uh we were able to help people understand is that uh handguns modern handguns are designed to be carried with a round in the chamber not empty uh, and if you do everything correctly and follow instructions your gun will always go bang uh not just sometimes now we had a, a we had a really great we had a great weekend of training we had a lot of good students who came they were enthusiastic they paid attention uh we're grateful for them and we're looking forward to doing a lot more of it where are we at uh right now on time time we're a little over uh, about an hour and nine minutes okay all right i've so. got a question about eotex if we have time for it later yeah we got time for that i can i can knock that out Boom, we'll, no we'll problem. We'll do that during the Q&A session. Okay. It's going to be after we talk about the SOTGU podcast. Well, first how of all, how can people, uh, if they yeah. want information about training? Well, I want which, to tell them something okay. real quick. If you have a question, ask the question. We're going to continue talking about our weekend after action in the Student and Gun University classes and whatnot. But if you have a question in the meantime, post that question wherever you are, which will be in the Discord right now. <laughs> wherever you are. And uh, we'll drop it into the Q&A session. I'm in so the bathroom. We'll can I write it on the wall? Of. That's right. You can. You can. You're an American probably. You might not you be, though. You shouldn't do graffiti, though. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. Gra for graffiti is death. <laughs> this week on, uh, before we do that, this week on Student of the Gun University podcast, that is a separate un uh, separate product. It is a oh, short thought, form, I single topic. We we're still going to talk about the... Are we done with the after action? Unless you got any, something else to oh, say. Oh, I thought we still were going on the after action. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to beat a dead horse. Um, Was there anything else that we learned? Oh, we learned that sometimes uh, rounds go backwards into your gun. Oh yeah. Then you have to figure out how to fix that. We did. We had quite a few learning experiences. We did. We had. Yeah, we had, and that was good. That's that's where you're supposed to learn. Yeah. You're supposed to learn on the range. You're supposed to learn in a training environment. That way you don't, A, make those mistakes out in the real world. And if they do happen, then you know what to do. So why, if, if I was a new person and I just got into, I wanted to buy a pistol because over the last couple of years, I've realized that society maybe isn't as stable as I thought it was. And there's people maybe. that do things that are, and there's evil people, bad people in the world. And I just need a handgun to protect myself. Why do I need to go to training? <laughs> well, can't I just load that thing with the the uh, full metal jacket ammo that I got as uh, that the guy sold me? And, and no, the actually yeah, the guy pro tried to he tried to sell you the expensive stuff and you wouldn't buy it. But uh, no, uh, yeah, the, the the idea that people don't understand why they should train that and that's you know coming from me, they're like you just want to trick people into spending money on training. You're right. Like, yep, you got me. I want to trick people into spending money on training. What you're going to get and what the most the most valuable thing that you can get from a training class is real, genuine confidence. Not this woke, politically correct, horse crap garbage about, um, you know, everyone is a good person and everyone has value and everyone da, da, and your feelings if you feel like you're a good person then you are and no genuine confidence when you're holding that gun and this is one thing that i said to the uh the audience uh the, the class i said look if you're ever involved in a self-defense you know, deadly force scenario, whether it's a home invasion like we saw in Texas uh, or an attack on the street, you've got a lot of things going on there, right? You got a lot of problems. You got a lot of things that you need to fix. One of the problems or one of the issues that you're dealing with should not be, I hope that I can make this gun work and I hope that I can actually 
hit the target with my bullets, right? You should have absolute 100% confidence in yourself and your equipment. There should be no question at all in your mind when it comes time to use that gun, whether you're going to be able to make it work and you're going to hit what you're shooting at. You've got enough problems. You, there's enough variables going on. That shouldn't be one of them. Hoping that this thing's going to work is shouldn't be one of your problems. And so when you, if you go to training, the, some, the thing that you'll get that you can't buy in a store, you can't go to Academy Outdoors or wherever and buy genuine, real confidence. Now, paying, you know, a person who's going to train you, uh, they've invested their time and money uh, in becoming a trainer. So their time is worth money. But you can't go on Amazon and purchase real, genuine confidence. Doesn't happen. How do you get that? You get that by taking your butt and getting it into a training class and getting real experience and real coaching and real training and then leaving from there and saying okay now I get it now I understand and if I ever have to use this thing I will be able to use it there's no doubt in my mind that I'll be able to make this thing work and you, you can't make it up and you can't trick your own mind you can't trick yourself so and that's I guess that's all I have to say about that bleep 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 that's the reason to get training. Yep. Increase your confidence. You can't get it anywhere else. And All right. This so week on. We, oh, go ahead. This week on Student of the Gun University Podcast. If you're not following Student of the Gun University Podcast, it is a single topic, short form, easy to digest uh, listening experience. And we're going to continue with the four pillars of combat. And this week, we're going to talk about skill. We talked about mindset, tactics. Now we're talking about skill. If you go to SOTGU.com, you can get more information on not only the classes that we've been talking about, but you can get more information on the podcast as well. Uh, we've got a, uh, a large thing, a large change that is launching very, very soon. It's actually in the final edit stages right now. So if you go to SOTGU.com, you can listen to the show there. You can support the show or you can sign up to get notified about the classes and you'll get more information as soon as it launches. There you go. You you know you want to be there. All right. Uh, question. How durable are the EOTech 512s for an AR? I've been using EOTech products for a long, long time, and uh, I've had great success with them. I know like nine or ten years ago, they had, they're like, eh, they, when, it, it, when it gets below negative ten, they don't work well. And I'm like, and, and they lied, and they, 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 they lose zero at negative 20. Okay, sorry. A, if it's negative 20, why are you outside? Uh, <laughs> and B, is that really something that is... The biggest thing that EOTech had was that is EOTech is a, a, it's a projected hologram, right? You're like, oh, it's just a fancy red dot. Eh, not really. EOTech, the technology that goes into it, it is a... Pro, what you're seeing with your eyeball is a projected hologram. That's why they're able to use the circle in the dot dealio, right? That's why they can do it. Uh, and it works really well. The, the, the sites work really well, but when compared to something like a, a Holosun or an Aimpoint, you're like, oh, the battery time, man, the battery time, the battery time. Well, according to... Uh, I'm just going to go at their, uh, the, the EOTech website, the modern model 512. Now, if you don't know, the 512 is unique because it uses uh, commonly available AA batteries as opposed to the, 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 123, the 123A lithiums. Now, you can put lithium AA's in it if you want to, but uh, the, the, it, on the middle setting, the setting number 12, there's actually 20 uh, brightness settings on an EOTech, which seems like a lot. It's a lot. But if you set it at 12 at room temperature, they say you'll get 2,500 hours 
out of a lithium battery and 2,200 continuous hours of runtime uh, with regular alkaline batteries. Do the modern EOTechs have an auto off? I do not know if the 512 has the auto off. So that's one of the... That's one of the things that people complained about. They're like... Or like a shake on. That, that is the main thing that I like. Five hours about, or four hours. Or yeah, something. some of the other brands where it, you can, it's the shake awake or whatever. However, I haven't used one of those in a training class, so I don't know the durability of them. Yeah. And that's maybe why EOTech doesn't have that if they don't, is it messes with the durability. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I do know that I trust the EOTech company. Absolutely. Uh, I, I trust them. And I've used their products. I've used their products to do a lot of stuff. I have killed formerly living creatures um, with rifles that had EOTechs on them. So, I, I mean, I know they, they don't just work on the range. They work in the world. Uh so I would not shy away from one, and uh, they're they're also they're they're also they have the advantage of being very rapid, a very rapid, uh, easy to acquire site. So there you go. That is my advice to you regarding those. The second question is: Do you have a recommendation or a recommended ankle holster? I've carried two. <sighs> ankle holsters in my lifetime um and one of them was from crossbreed they just called the ankle holster yeah the and crossbreed one is pretty much the the standard traditional yep. style yeah um, and then the um i carried another one from galco i can't remember if it the was ankle the, glove i can't remember if it was a glove or the guard i'm pretty sure it was the glove because it had the leather holster on it and the guard looks like it's a newer one yeah i've i've used uh farts i can't remember the name of the company that made the one it was basically a, a rubber band i was, it was, was an elastic one, band with velcro and stuff that the j-frame went in yeah that, that i used to wear over one. my boot yeah i like that one but i can't remember the name of the the company that had yeah it. when i was a popo i used to carry one on my boot uh my left ankle um yeah galco makes good stuff they, they make good ankle holsters uh yeah, you, you or you could try, you know, the uh oh the, the tough products. Go to tough products. Is that who is oh that's not it. That's tourniquet carry. Actually, no, I, I actually I believe it was it tough? It might have been a tough products one. Now that's that's not an ankle holster, that's a, a tourniquet rig. Yeah. Um no, they don't make them anymore. I think they did and they stopped. That's the thing with the gun world is a lot of times companies will do something and they don't sell a lot of them or they, you know, so they just stop. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, there you go. The, the, the biggest thing uh, I would say is you're get, with an ankle rig, you're like, man, I don't want to buy something that's not going to work. And I, and I understand that. The Galco one's probably going to work for you uh, if, if you buy it. And and the truth is the uh, uh, the – Crossbreed one will probably work for you too. It's just a different style. Uh, if you have a, big calves, that was my problem. I have bigger calves. Yeah, if you have so muscular, like big muscular calves down the leg, uh, it was super comfortable. It just didn't work for my the, the, massive well, and, man calves. All right, this is the piece of advice I'm going to give you guys. Ankle holsters work best with either hiking boot type um, high top boots and and regular boot boots that's they don't work really well well that's where i did it wrong it was an user error on my part because i always wore it with shoes so yeah it wasn't tall enough to get above my calf yeah so i mean i always i always wore it with i mean i guess you could wear tennis shoes if you wanted to uh i always wore mine with boots you know with lace-up duty style boots so uh but you know, do what you want. You're an American. You You're said an American. Duty. 